Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Leading Edge on the Road this week. I'm Jeff Smith. Glad to have you with us. Sitting here with Chief of Police Toledo, George Crawl getting ready to retire and move on to greener pasture. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about Absolutely. that. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in and sit down with you Oh, this my morning. pleasure. Thanks for being here. Tell me, let's start <laughs> off talking about the 24-year-old George Crawl, okay? Starting, starting in the force. What does this George Crawl, after all this year, after these many years with the Toledo Police, what does that George Crawl say to 24-year-old George Crawl and vice versa? I remember the first day of the academy like it was yesterday. December 14th, 1990, we were standing outside of Owens Community College and it was 20 below zero and it, everybody was freezing and we're like, okay, and we're doing push-ups and like, okay, is this what the next six months have in store? Um, fast forward 32 years, I would tell a younger version of me is keep your mouth shut, learn as much as you can from as many people as you can and every day go out to try to help at least one person. Mm -hmm. And what does that 24 year old tell his senior, George Grohl? Don't ever take a promotional test. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, I, I want to cover a lot of different things with you. Obviously I've been around here a long time. So names and, and people and places and things that have affected Toledo, Northwest Ohio and kind of <coughs> reflect with you on that a little bit. One of those people who uh, was such an inspiration to me was Mike Collins. And I, I wanted to kind of take this moment, and as, as we cover so much ground here this morning with you, <coughs> I wanted to go back and talk a little bit about Mike and what, what he was to you, what, what his leadership meant, not only on the force, TPPA, but, but as mayor as well, and bringing you on as chief. I, we, Mike Collins and I went the whole gamut together. When I first was hired on, he was my union president. And he was there representing me and the rest of the patrol officers at that time. As time went on, I got promoted to sergeant and I was in internal affairs and he would be opposing me in chief's hearing, arguing against me. So we went from working together as a representative and, and a patrolman to foes as a command officer and, and a union president. And then he retired and got uh, elected in as District 2 council person. Mm -hmm. So then he became my city council person because I live in District 2. And uh, it, it got to the point where city council and the role that I was in at that time at planning and research, I would get statistics for them and information. And um, we, you know, it just started a, a friendship, if you will. I mean, it was a professional relationship. It was not like we would go to dinner with our families together. Right. but. Um, it got to the point where he got elected to mayor and eventually said, you know, I would, I would like you to be chief. And it, we really went through my entire career together and I, I'll, I'll never forget that morning, w Sheriff Tharp was gonna call a level three snow emergency several hours down because we were gonna get a, just get hammered with snow. Super Bowl Sunday. It yeah. was Super Bowl Sunday and I stood next to him on the podium at a press conference and when it ended I grew up in in Boston I'm a huge Patriots fan he was just killing me over the Patriots and how we were gonna lose drove home got in a comfortable clothes put my feet up to watch the game and Kamo called and said that he got into a crash I spent the next 10 or 12 hours at the hospital you know with Sandy and, and him and and obviously we know how it ended so right. Uh, unfortunately, I really only had a month to work for him as mayor. Yeah. He, he promoted me in January of 15, and he, he passed away in February. Do you, do you look back, and it, for people who maybe are unfamiliar with the, the time at, as it was, but do you look back at that and think, I was surprised he, he wanted me to be his chief? I, I was. Um, it, it, when I first got the inclination that that's what he was thinking about, it was weeks and weeks and weeks before um, something really weird happened here and I said let me be I knew he had already been elected I said let me be chief for an hour that's all I want is just an hour so I can make one change and he says you're gonna be chief a lot longer than an hour and then I'm like oh it kinda hit me I never said anything obviously yeah. so um, it, it 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 was it was just really from day one to 
the chief of police that he was part of this with me. I appreciate you kind of going back and talking about that. We have seen so many changes, and I want you to take me into the police force a little bit as far as policing. Help me understand, help the viewers understand how things have changed over the years. Because in so many industries, we see a softening, right? The culture is so important as far as how people are treated, how people are spoken to, spoken with, addressed. How has policing changed? Has it had to change? Or is there still that need to have that drill sergeant mentality? Because at the end of the day, you're sending officers out into the streets dealing with life or death situations. Does that make sense? Is that fair? It, it makes complete sense. And policing has changed 180 degrees from when I first came on. You're right. There are times when there's something happening right now where if we get called to a scene and it's chaos and chaotic and there's life and death impl implications, mm -hmm. we have to take charge. And that's when, we, that's when we start yelling and barking out orders. We've also changed by necessity when because you say of we, as far as meaning the police. Okay, but I, but also those who are in higher positions, or you're just saying everybody takes in general, on that role those, has to. They have to, yeah. and 99 percent of the time, it's the street officers, the patrolmen. There's more uh, patrolmen than there are command, and when they get to a scene and it's going south quickly. That's when they get into, I'm in charge here and you're gonna do what I say. Mm -hmm. Once the scene is diffused and taken care of, then we'll start talking and figure out what's going on. But we don't have the, the latitude of saying, well, come on everybody, let's stop. You know, put the gun down. You know, don't point that gun at someone. You know, put the knife down. That's when, you know, a, a lot of folks get upset when they see officers kind of start yelling and, and being authoritative. We have to, to save lives. And then when everything is calmed down, that's when we amp it down a little bit and figure out what's going on. Now, when I came on, there were no radios in cars, there were no computers in cars, there were no cameras. We had to use our portable radios to communicate. Mm -hmm. So now, fast forward to now, this, the, these patrol vehicles are officers' offices. They have the cameras, they have radios, they have computers, they have printers. It, it has everything that they need to be successful out there without having to come back to the building. Sure. And our profession is dictated by laws and legislation. So whenever the Supreme Court comes down with a decision or a local legislation comes down with something, you know, we have to change the way we do things. And, and rightfully so. I mean, this profession, and nothing against accountants, if there's an accountant watching this, but it, that profession pretty much stays static mm -hmm. in the same, same procedures throughout history. The police department has changed 180 degrees and it will continue to change and evolve as court decisions come down, as new equipment and technology is introduced, and, and it should, and it rightfully should. I was just going to ask you that. For the better, uh, do you look at it as these are Absolutely. changes that needed to happen? It, it, it does. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times at the moment, we scratch our heads and say, I don't get it. And there are some new rules and regulations and laws that may not make sense. Mm. Um, but the lion's share of them, the, the, later on when things start to calm down, uh, people understand the utility of the change. When we come back here on Leading Edge, we're going to talk more to Police Chief George Crawl as he gets ready to retire here from the Toledo Police Force. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back here on this Sunday. So glad to have with us Toledo Police Chief George Crawl as we took leading edge on the road this week, coming to you from police headquarters. Chief, thank you so much once again for joining us. We talked a little bit, historically speaking, going back a little bit when we started our first segment. I want to talk to you about positions you've held here. And I understand there's only one that you have not held. Is that correct? Uh, one that I wanted that I didn't hold. Yes, I, I always wanted to be on our SWAT team. I put in for it twice and I didn't get it, so I figured someone's telling me something, so I decided to, to go a different route. What was, what was the draw to that? To, I was, to I the, was, in was the, it interest? Was it It intrigue? was. The training is fantastic. The equipment that they have is fantastic. Um, the camaraderie of being that type of high entry dynamic team um, really appealed to me. I, I was in the service before I came on the police department, so I'm like, okay, I, I would like to give this a shot, but um, fate sh told me otherwise. Yeah. Over the last few weeks, obviously the last few months, last few years, a lot of focus on violent crime. 
Um, just this past couple of weeks, you've been at city council, you've talked about statistically speaking, mm -hmm. violent crime here in Toledo has gone down. Why doesn't it feel like it? Don't take this the wrong way, but the media. Uh, you turn on any newscast, whether it be local, national, international, the first two stories after the weather is violent crime. Whether something happened recently or something happened a week ago, it just seems to be rehashed and rehashed and rehashed. So people out there watching the news sees that, and then they look at their phone and everything is about violent crime, whether it, if it's on Facebook, whether it's true or not, it, it just keeps getting pounded into people's heads. and it appears that things are worse than they really are. Now, now, don't get me wrong, we, our level of homicides are still unacceptably high, but we're trending in the right direction. You know, as of that, that city council meeting, our homicides were down almost 10%. Our overall shootings are down 35%. So yes, and, and I understand the victims and loved ones, the, the loved ones of the victims rather, they're they're suffering and they're in pain and they want us to do something and I completely appreciate that and understand it. And I don't want anyone to think that, hey, we're down 10%, we're, we're good. Uh, we're never gonna stop. You know, we're gonna continue looking at new programs, new initiatives that we can do to reduce those crimes. And, and I, I really think over the next few years, you're gonna see uh, the, the violent crime continue to trend down. I have to, I have to say, we, we have this conversation a lot in the newsroom about what is our job, what is our role, right? And I'm sure you go through the same thing sometimes, but we focus on the abnormal. Mm -hmm. that, that usually is what, if, if everything was normal, people wouldn't probably be interested. They wouldn't pick up the paper. They want to read about <laughs> the things that they don't experience in their everyday life. Right or wrong, that's what we're seeing right? We're seeing a little bit more the abnormal. I've had people come to me, Chief, and I grew up in this town, and they've said, this isn't the town I grew up in. There's mm -hmm. a different element. There seems to be a different element. Are those conversations happening here? Of, of course. And, you know, I, I know this is the convenient scapegoat, but COVID really has done a number on this country. If you look pre-COVID numbers, Toledo would average 30 to 31 homicides a year, and then COVID hits, and it, it, it put our nation into a place it hasn't been in, in a century. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't be with your friends. You can't go out to dinner. You can't go to the movies. You can't, we're not meant to do that. We're social beings. And I think that with the mandates and, and everything else, I think people just it, it may have lost it a little bit. And I think now that things are starting to, to calm down, I, I think we're starting to see the, the normalcy come back to society. And, and I hear it all the time. You know, people say, I, I, live, I live in XYZ and I used to be able to go to sleep with my car unlocked and my doors unlocked. I get it, mm -hmm. I, it's frustrating. Um, my house has been broken into, my, you know, my vehicles have been broken into my garage. I, I understand what it feels like to be a victim like that. Um, but it's just, I really think that COVID was the perfect storm to start this, and you couple that with the George Floyd murder and the, the summer of protests and riots, it just really threw this country into, into a, a really bad place. Violence interrupters as it came on, turning into Save Our Community, but as you look at that program, think about that program as you're getting ready to leave this position, what did it do? Did it serve its purpose? Did it do what, it, what, what was intended? How much more is there still to be done, you think? Um, you know, it's really hard to say because it, how do you quantify a shooting that didn't happen? I mean, how do you say because of, because of these, the interrupters? We don't know what we did. We don't stop. know exactly. Now, they've done a, a great job, and I think that program is going to continue to evolve as time goes on. Uh, is, let me ask you something, and I hope this is a fair question. Everybody's begging for Block Watch. Is that not. Uh, just another form of block watch? No. Okay. No. It's different. It's different. The, these interrupters are actually out there in the in the neighborhoods, um, talking with potential, not just you know victims of crime, saying, hey, you know, retaliation and retribution isn't the best course of action right now. You know, providing services to try to, you know, maybe stop something from happening in the future. And what I think is going to really help. The, the interrupters and in, in the Save Our City is, uh, you know, 
Mercy is going to be involved a little bit in the private sector because I think if you look at other successful programs, it's kind of more of a health care, mm -hmm. you know, this reducing violence is more of a, a public health issue rather than a law enforcement issue, which is completely correct. And I think a large institution like Mercy Health, if they get involved more, um, which I believe is the plan, it's going to really help tweak that program. I had somebody the other day say to me, they're like, "Why? we hear snitches get mm -hmm. whatever, but why doesn't anybody take it on themselves to say snitches get riches? Because you're, all, you're always offering right. <laughs> reward money for you know, information. It, I promise you, of the homicides that are unsolved right now, a dozen people know who killed each of those those victims, and I understand that acronym. You know, stitches get you know, snitches get stitches, and blah blah blah. But there has to be a time where we, as a community, say, "I'm done." You know, we have we're having our brothers, our sisters, our cousins being killed in the streets, and yeah, I, I know. I know Joe Blow did it, but I'm not going to say anything. There has to be a time where I'm like, no, I, no, I'm going to, I'm going to draw the line in the sand, and I'm going to do the the right thing. And we have we have things here that we can help keep people safe. You know, the Crime Stoppers is is completely anonymous. There's not a person in the city who doesn't know someone who wears a badge that they can say, hey. I know what's going on, but I'm afraid for my safety. And we'll do, we have mechanisms in place that we can help keep people safe. Chief, stay right there. We've got our final segment coming up. And in that last five minutes, I'm going to throw some things at you fast. Just <laughs> one word answers, and we're going we're gonna to have you put your thinking cap on when we come back. Stay with us. Leading Edge comes back right after this. Welcome back once again here on Leading Edge. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this week, as well as Toledo Police Chief George Crawl, as we talk about retirement heading to what? What is what is next? Can we say that? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm talking with with an organization that could be a, a good match for me, and uh, I'm hopeful. Something you've done in the past? No. That something familiar to you? It's, it's familiar, but nothing, yeah. nothing re regarding you know, law enforcement. Yeah. Um, so if that happens, great. I, I would love it. Stay tuned. It, it, stay tuned. <laughs> if not, you know, I have a one-year-old grandson that um, I would love to, to spoil and teach how to play bad golf like his grandpa. So <laughs> it, it, we'll see what happens. Teach him how to barbecue and smoke? Uh, he already knows. Yeah. We, we've okay. already started that. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, I wanted to throw some, some quick thoughts to you and just gut reaction, just hear, hear what you think. So I'm going to throw a couple of things at you here. Gun legislation. We need to enforce what we have. That's, that's my biggest take on that. Um, we have, we have sufficient gun laws on the books. Um, once we start enforcing them and get the people who are, should not be having these guns uh, in prison where they belong, um, that'll, that'll help curb violence. Um, a lot of gun legislation is out there that, that, let's be perfectly honest, the criminal element isn't going to pay attention to what laws just passed. That's, that's does nothing more than hurt the, the, common, the common person. We need to start vigorously enforcing the laws that we already have in the books. Gun buybacks. Any gun off the street is a good gun for me. Mm -hmm. Statistically, they haven't worked. They, there's no real benefit of them. But any time that we can take a gun off the street, whether it's a 1941 Ruger or a brand new Glock 9mm M4. Wade caps a cabbage. The best mayor I've worked for, obviously take Mike Collins out of the, the mix because it was only for a month. Um, his dad's a former police officer, so he understands it. Um, regardless of what people may think of him uh, in the community and in the department, he's backed, he's backed me and he's, he's supported me in everything I've done here. Rudy's hot dogs. Good, except no sauce. <laughs> I'm not a sauce on him on hot dogs guy. Well, then I have to say Tony Paco's to the contrary. Chicken paprikash. Okay. Uh, downtown Toledo. The best I've seen in 33 years. LaGrange Village. Needs, needs, needs um, more, it needs more attention. That was my. TLC? Uh, yes, it needs, that's the district I worked when I was a patrolman, a sergeant, a lieutenant, and that's like my second home is LaGrange Street Corridor. And I, I think when you see the, the downtown 
booming so well that's going to start resonating out into the old south end, the north end, uh, jump across the river to the east side. Kind of a ripple effect. Yes. Tasers. Any less than lethal tool that I can provide my officers, I'm for. The Toledo Police Department. The best in the country. Metal detectors in schools. A sad necessity. Why do you say that? Because, because administrators, they're not in the same, they I know. don't think that way. Well, every day we see kids coming to school with guns for whatever reason, and kids are in a school to be safe and to learn. And if we can make sure, if a metal detector keeps someone from bringing an illegal gun or a knife to school, then I'm all for them. Our youth. Our future. Chief, thank you so much for spending some time with us. My pleasure. We'll be right back, right after this. Once again, we want to say thank you to the Toledo Police Department as well as Toledo Police Chief George Crawl for spending some time with us here on Leading Edge. By the way, if you missed any point of our interview, you can go back and check it out on our YouTube channel. Chief, continued good luck and good health. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks. Absolutely. And we'll see you next time here on Leading Edge.